Is this your way of telling Mama that you want to come with her on her Seattle getaway? He's such a sweetie. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a musician and I live in Nashville and I travel a lot for work, but in 2020, a lot of that traveling came to a screeching halt when nearly all of my travel gigs were canceled. 2021 came along and professionally, it ended up being a great year, but for me personally, it was an even crummier feeling year than 2020. But I began to realize how much I missed traveling. So I decided to plan a couple of trips just for fun. And one of my favorite things that I did all year was spend a week in Seattle. I stayed in an Airbnb in Ballard, just a little north of the city. And I fit a lot of stuff into the time I was in Seattle, but just a forewarning, there are gonna be a few obvious things missing from this video that you would probably see in a more standard Seattle vlog. Like this, and this, and this. Those are some big balls. This train will be stopping momentarily for an operator change. The train will be moving shortly. We thank you for your patience. This is the nicest train stop I have ever been in. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's amazing. Well, thank you. So you could say I learned something the hard way about vlogging today. I was filming myself in that beautiful train station in downtown Seattle, and I was walking up the stairs about to exit the station, and this young guy was walking down the stairs, and he goes, did you just take a photo of me? And I thought he was asking, will you take a picture of me? He was with his dog, and I said, yes. And then I realized he was accusing me of taking a picture of him. And I said, no, no, I didn't take a picture of you. I took a picture of me. And he looked at me really suspiciously. And it made me think that when you're vlogging by yourself and you don't have someone else holding the camera or you're not holding the camera filming someone else, it could look like you're taking footage of someone else. So I guess that's something I need to be a little cautious about. It's day one of my Seattle getaway. I've got some friends here I'm really excited to see. Um, my friends naturally are very nice people. That guy in the subway was not very nice. I don't know what the general reputation of the, the niceness of people in Seattle is, but I was on the bus and almost every single person who exited the bus said thank you to the driver, which I thought was very kind. Pike Place Market, I'm coming for you. I did this but the few days that I'm here in Seattle I don't think it's gonna rain at all and today it is freaking sunny it's beautiful Is it the best macaroni and cheese ever? It might be. I mean, it's it's really good. Oh man, what did I get? Okay, so if you're a chef, you might not want to watch this next part, but if you're just a fellow food enthusiast like I am, I'm about to cook a piece of salmon that I purchased at the Pike Place Market.
Okay, it's a little on the salty side, but, oh, I'm still gonna eat it. It's salty because the shaker that I was using, the salt shaker was a little loose, but I'm gonna eat it. Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna be honest, that was literally a dream come true to buy a piece of fish at Pike Place Market and cook it and eat it within two days of purchasing it literally a dream come true it was delicious it was a little salty but aside from that it was freaking great i'm the only tourist who's going to come to seattle and not go to starbucks at all I'm doing as the Pacific Northwesterners do, and I am hiking at Rattlesnake Ridge. I extended my stay by a day, but the cute little Airbnb that I was in didn't have any more availability. So I've had to go to an actual hotel tonight. I'm at the Even Hotel. Wow, I can do yoga in my hotel. It's got a nice little courtyard. People having coffee. Speaking of coffee. You know, I used to have a bike in Nashville when I lived kind of downtown and I loved having a bike, I loved riding a bike, but it was so inconvenient to ride a bike in downtown Nashville and it's kind of hilly. I didn't have a bike with a whole lot of gears, so I ended up selling it, but you know, now Nashville has some bike lanes, but honestly, there are bike lanes in the weirdest places. A place like this is so bike friendly, it's just second nature to have a, an available lane for the bike, it's pretty cool.
at Kobe Terrace and in these gardens. I don't know why. Okay, this Seattle Chinatown experience is mind-blowingly wonderful. So enriching, it's been fantastic. I had a dim sum lunch at Dozone, which was good. I mean, it was nice to experience those hot and sour flavors. And now I'm sipping on a, a boba tea from Young Tea. This is a, a flavor, if you will. I mean, it's hoji cha, green tea. This is not something that you'd be able to get in Nashville. I went to the, a major market in this area, the Uwa Jumaya. If I said that wrong, please let me know. And uh, it was the kind of experience that, you know, when I went to... I went to Japan 15 years ago and I, I haven't been back. I've, I haven't been back to Asia, actually. I really wanted to, but man, it was... It took me right back. This is my last full day in Seattle and honestly, this experience in the Chinatown and Japantown area has just, it's really been a wonderful cap to the trip. So Seattle, you did not disappoint and I can't wait to come back. I did wonder at some point during my trip, was my desire to take this nearly 3,000 mile trip to one of the most northwestern points of the U.S. a result of stir craziness and being home for so many months in 2020? Or was it actually an attempt to escape from everything that was going on in the world? It did occur to me while I was in Seattle that as much as I would love to escape everything that was going on in the world, it just wasn't gonna happen. But I loved taking this trip. And even as I was editing this video, I was transported back to all the excited feelings that I had when I was there. And I'm already planning to take some time off from gigs and go back. Welcome to this Pike Place Market unboxing. Yes, I bought so much at the market that I don't even remember all I bought. And it seemed uh, worth taking it all out of the bags here as part of the vlog. I had a day at the market that could be described as what foodie dreams are made of. When I've been to De Laurenti, I hope that's how you pronounce it, when I've been to this really nice grocery store in the past, I'm always drooling over all of the chocolate bars and all of the beautiful items that I just, I didn't want to justify the price. I didn't want to pack them in luggage and bring them home. Well. This time at the market, I let go of all discipline and I bought those $10 chocolate bars and I bought that truffle pasta sauce and I just, I did it all. Pasta from Italy, Strassinati, Strassinati, Strassinati? If I'm saying this wrong, please let me know in the comments. Pasta sauce to accompany the pasta. Black Truffle Pomodoro from the company Truff. I wasn't sure how much this cost. It wasn't listed on the shelf or on the bottle and then I saw on the receipt and I don't wanna talk about it. I really hope that I enjoy this once I get home to Nashville. I don't do a lot of pasta, but I am going to make a point of eating pasta with this sauce. Did I need this many candy bars? Need is the wrong word. De Laurenti has this enormous artisan chocolate bar section and the several times that I've been in there, I'm always really curious as to why these candy bars cost 10 to $17 each. And I really wanna try all of them, so I got a bunch. The $17 candy bar, which 
is not here anymore because I ate it with friends, um, I can't say that was worth $17. It had, um, what did it have in it? I forget the actual terminology, but it was a milk chocolate bar and it had the outer part of the cacao bean kind of in the bar. Let's just say that citrus and chocolate is not my favorite thing, like chocolate covered orange, not my favorite thing. If I could do it again, I'm probably not buying the $17 candy bar. I hope I don't feel the same way about these. The babyest Nutella on the planet. I like Nutella. I'm not crazy, crazy about it because if you've ever been to Switzerland or the Swiss German border, you may be familiar with Ovamaltine Crunch Cream. Here in the United States, Ovaltine is known as a chocolate malt mixed drink. I think a lot of people had it when they were kids. I didn't have it when we were kids, but I've always known what it is. I think it actually is of Swiss origin. It's Ovamaltine because it's malt flavored and the Ovamaltine Crunch Cream is like Nutella on crack. It has that malt flavor, but it also has like crunchy kind of almost rice crispy things in it. So I like Nutella, but I have an expanded horizon when it comes to chocolate spreads. Okay, that's it for what I got at De La Renti. Now, some things that I bought at the market yesterday are long gone because I ate them. I love Misum Pastry, the Chinese pastry place, and that green tea sesame ball is long gone. I do still have some red bean paste. Uh, I don't know if this was described as a cookie or what this was, but I do love the sweet red bean paste. So some of that's left over. Mm. This is huge too. I don't know if, if this is like a typical Chinese pastry size. Mm. Sweet clover honey from the Sunny, what is it? The Sunny Honey Company. Travel safe, it's gonna go right in my bag and home in my tea. Some cheeses from the Market Spice Cheese Place. This is a, a nice slice of, it's, it's bouche. It's, I think it might be the, the sheep bouche. There was sheep and there was goat. I really like sheep cheese. Actually, I think this is sheep cheese too. This is a Arpea and I, this is, this looks like a mouse. I already took to it and that mouse was me. Mm. That's good. Right outside the market was this store that I, I didn't know it was there until I was walking past it. Robot versus Sloth. The description of these two little cute guys is cute animals fighting each other and local handmade art. Like this pin, which is the spitting image of my kitty at home. This kitty is destroying this plant, which is exactly what my cat at home would do. So accurate. And the last huge stop that I made at the market was Market Spice. I remember from the last time several years ago that I was at Pike Place Market that I brought home the Market Spice Chai, which I really, really enjoyed and was craving. And if I'm really honest, is one of the main reasons I wanted to take a trip to Seattle to replenish. Here it is in all its glory, Market Chai. I think I'm sort of repeating myself here because I'm I'm realizing the last time I was here, I also got the knockout tea, which uh, is supposed to help you sleep. And I remember having some of this at home, so I must have bought it here. African red bush tea with some of the Market Spice store uh, signature cinnamon and orange flavor. Oh man, cinnamon. Oh, and this doesn't have tea, but this is spicy Seattle chai spices, just the spices to go where, in whatever I want, and a dang tin to put them in. So they stay fresh. So now I've got to figure out how to get this home. It's got to go in my suitcase somewhere.